What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest and best ROM in my opinion. This is the latest rising OS Elysium official built version 1.4 based on Android 13 and this is the 23rd October 2023 build. Yes, there is also the Evolution X ROM updates but I would say as of today I will recommend this particular ROM over Evolution X. In my frank opinion, in terms of stability, in terms of customization and all, this rising OS definitely beats the Evolution X ROM. But that is when you don't need the highest refresh rate out there. Yes, it does not include those 90 hertz, 1 or 2 hertz kind of like high refresh rates. It's just a 60 hertz ROM. But still, I would say this is one of the best ROMs that I have seen as of today for the Redmi K20 Pro. Now, there are two separate versions and one is the dynamic, one is the legacy one. Well, the dynamic one includes that dynamic kind of partition. I don't have that kind of partition. I have been using the legacy kind of ROM and my experience will be with that. So I would suggest if you are someone who switches a lot of ROMs, definitely go with the legacy ROM. It will be easier to flash and switch between other ROMs. And yes, this ROM also has two separate versions. One is GApps included, one is without GApps. And of course, I have flashed the GApps included variant here. Now here is how the about phone section actually looks like. We have the Rising Y version 1.4 written and this is of course for Redmi K20 Pro. And on the bottom we have the Android version as Android 13. The Rising Y or the Rising OS version is 1.4 Elysium. And the security patch as of today, it's still September 1st, 2023, not quite October yet for some weird reason. And we have the build version written right here. The stock kernel is the 4.14 Soviet star kernel here. In the system settings, these are the options that you will get. You will also get a system updater from here. You can check for updates. And we also have the USB configuration for convenience right here. Then we have the gesture settings in here. We have the quick tap or the back tap action. And these are the options that you can choose from. As usual, we have the quickly open camera as well. Then the system navigation gestures in the settings of it. We have the navigation hint, pill length and radius customization. We have the swipe to invoke assistant as well. And the left edge, right edge customization is also there. No problems. Two button and three button navigations are also there. We have the hold for assistant as well. Let me go back. One handed mode also works perfectly fine. Double tap to check phone, lift to check phone. Everything is there. We also have this long press or free cupid scanner to actually unlock the device. I think this is the always on FOD and we have the press and hold power button action and the prevent ringing. That's it in terms of the gestures. Now we also have the button settings right here. Invert layout option is there inside power menu. We do get the advanced reboot. You can enable it and the device controls you can enable in the power menu with this. We have the long press power button toggle torch. If you scroll down more, we have even more options if you need all of those. We also get the front camera sound effects and you can disable the camera LED if you want to. Now that's all about the system settings. Right now, let me show you some of the things in the launcher settings or test launcher present by default. And we have the miscellaneous settings. We have the use taskbar, along home screen rotation, enable haptic feedback, launcher vibration intensity and the session and the hidden product trap option is there. We have the background blur depth and the action toast and the restart option. Let me go to the recent option in here. We have the memory info and the clear all. If you scroll down more, we have the shake phone to clear all intensity and you can enable this feature from right here. We have the split app, screenshot, pin app, lens, etc. options in the recent panel. By the way, this is how it looks like. It looks so beautiful with these buttons on the bottom. You will get to see the RAM usage status, the screenshot lock app button, then the split app and the Google Lens button appears right here and the clear all option is right there as well. In the app drawer, we have the app search bar, icon levels in drawer, row height and the background opacity. Then in the gestures, we have that shake phone gesture and we have the home screen settings. We have the lock layout, add app icons to the home screen, double tap to sleep while we're scrolling and zooming and all these functionalities are present that you are seeing from the screen. In the icons, of course, you can change the icon pack, the themed icons you can enable. Force monochrome themed icons are also there. We have the notification dots icon size, font size, etc. options. So huge amount of customization in terms of the stock launcher here. And to the left of the home screen, we have this Google's Discover page. Now swiping up will get you to the app drawer. You can search for any particular app. Swiping down will get you to the quick setting panel, which looks like this. And you can thoroughly customize it however you want to. You can edit and add even more toggles if you want. And the power menu appears like this. I do have the advanced reboot enabled, so I can directly reboot to the recovery or fast boot from right here. Wi-Fi mobile data I have added. I have the Bluetooth toggle, the flashlight, auto rotate, night light, and the Google Home controls battery saver. The screen recorder is also there. It has the newer features like the device audio and microphone audio recording at the same time. And the HEVC option and the lower quality, bigger file size limit, etc. options are there. We have the dark theme, the always on display, heads up, then the refresh rate. It doesn't really work. It's just 
switches to 60 hertz as you can see and auto and we have the do not disturb nearby share one handed mode we also have another do not disturb no idea why we have the dc dimming then the high brightness mode dc dimming you can enable normally and the high brightness mode of course is the daytime outdoor brightness you can definitely turn it on if you want a really really bright display we have the screencast ambient display dj saver airplane mode extra dim and the hotspot option and everywhere i would say the overall ui experience it's just awesome in this particular rom now one of the best features about this rom is stock camera because we are getting the leica camera present right out of the box this is the Leica camera version 5 it has all these newer features and even if you go into the video settings you will see there is the 4k and 60fps option with the rear camera that is actually working fine and you can switch the other lenses as well as you can see 0.6x works fine 1x and there is the 2x option right there so everything just works flawlessly over here while recording videos and stuff and there is a documents mode the pro mode everything should be working fine even in the portrait mode let me switch to the front camera and as you can see the portrait mode is actually working no problems with it it takes pictures normally and it has that MIUI camera kind of optimization everything it's just like perfectly working with this MIUI camera even if you want to shoot 48 megapixel photos you can do that right here and if you swipe up you will get even more options like the vlog then the short frame slow motion etc options every detail options are there with this Leica camera and that's just awesome and taking pictures it's really fast no problems whatsoever In the personalization, you will find the customizations of this ROM. Well, this ROM has huge, huge amount of customization. I'm not going to be able to show you guys all the things, but let me show you some of the things like the UDFPS customization options are there. There are the fingerprint scanner icon options, huge options, and we have the UDFPS animations as well. Just notice how many options are there. And we also have the lock screen clock style that will appear like this. As you can see, you can choose the lock screen clock style from right here by just sliding a finger on it and just notice there are plethora of options that you can choose from i have been using it with the nothing dot font which i'll show you later on this is the pixel wars and this is the n.57 this is the nothing one that i have been using but yeah there are 100 plus options for the lock screen clock styles and you can choose from all of these huge huge amount of options and if we scroll down more we have the lock screen clock button space and the text size and stuff you can customize from right here even the format you can have it on single line double line etc so this is huge even the date style you can actually customize it from right here i have been using with the road ridge and the big neutral titling options and stuff are also there if you want to use those now let me show you in the lock screen the clock looks like this this definitely looks like a nothing kind of lock screen clock and this is again one of the closest experiences that you will get to nothing ways with a custom rom and here let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed yeah it didn't unlock for that one time whenever i said that but otherwise as you can see even the screen of fod is working perfectly fine and this is of course one of the fastest fod experiences that i have seen at least i have to say and let me show you if the pickup gesture is actually working i'll just show you this as you can see pickup is actually working fine it wakes up into the lock screen and here if you want to see the other customization we have the game space then the parallel space etc options unlock higher pace in games google camera spoof unlimited google photo storage and the netflix kind of spoof everything is there and including with the swipe to screenshot and stuff everything is working fine including with the capture mode feature and stuff everything is there for the screenshots let me go back we have the ui customization like the font styles icon pack etc you can customize including with the wi-fi icon styles and stuff like that and if you scroll down more we have even more settings you can change the whole settings panel style as well so yeah, this rom definitely has one of the most customizable experiences i'm not going to show you everything but let me just jump into the display settings in here we have the brightness level adaptive brightness inside lock screen we have the control from lock device and if you go down we have the lift to check phone as well in the ambient display kind of options are there and i have this pickup option enabled but still it wakes up into the lock screen for some reason let me go back we have the dark theme you can set it to pure black if you want to then we have the display size and text option you can customize that we have the live display and the color calibration options are also there let me go back we have the desktop mode as well and the custom display settings in here we have that dc dimming and the high brightness mode then the double tap to sleep and the wake up on plug etc are there and in terms of wallpapers let me actually go into the wallpapers and styles and in here this is how the wallpapers and styles actually will look like we have the lock screen shortcuts as well you can customize that 
and we have the app grid up to 6 by 10 and we also have the change wallpaper option i have been using a fresh walls wallpaper but in case if you are looking for that nothing style ui of course it has the nothing phone 1 and the nothing phone 2 wallpapers these are the nothing phone 2 wallpapers and these are the nothing phone 1 wallpapers also we have the normal living universe kind of wallpapers as well and we have the other google pixel kind of wallpapers so definitely you can choose from any of them but i have been using again a fresh walls wallpaper and these are the colors that you can choose from right here now the battery settings is one of the most important parts about this rom because this one includes the design battery capacity the current battery capacity the charging cycles as well as with the battery temperature now this is huge because i haven't seen like these kind of information with other roms showing up at the top as well and it has these kind of animations everywhere and if you scroll down more, we have the charging control. I'll say it's just as well this option in case you need fast charging. If you enable this, fast charging will not work properly. And I have tested the battery life with the Aku battery app. And with that, my estimated screen on time showing up as seven hours plus. So that's a decent amount of screen on time, I would say. And the screen off shows as five days and the combined news shows as three days or more than that. And in the health section for me, my battery health showing up as 91% because again, I have replaced the battery a couple of months ago. So yeah, with that, with newer battery, I would say yes, the battery life should be decent while daily driving it. And even the fast charging is working fine. No need to worry about that. Even offline charging looks really awesome in this ROM that I have noticed. In terms of security settings, this is how it looks like. It has all those animations again. And if you go into the settings of it, we have the quick unlock, the scramble pin layout and the power button is new locks and all those things. I have already added the face unlock and fingerprint and there is the app lock as well. I have also added those. Now again, I have already showed you the like fingerprint scanner speed, but then again, let me actually show you one more time. I'll just tap on the fingerprint scanner area. And as you can see, it unlocks with the screen of FOD. And if I enable the always on display right now, if I show you, this is how it looks like. It has again, that nothing phone kind of vibe definitely looks so good with the always on display and here if i just tap the fingerprint scanner as you can see it unlocks very fast fingerprint scanner no problems whatsoever that i have faced and the always on display just straight up looks beautiful with this kind of clock style and stuff the nothing kind of clock style and even there are other clock styles of course that you can use and here let me actually show you the face unlock i'll just double tap to wake and swipe up it shows recognizing with face and as you can see it has unlocked let me try one more time with the face unlock so yeah, everything just works fine over here. No problems with it. And again, the fingerprint scanner, it's just one of the best experiences. And the app lock looks like this. And you have to tap the fingerprint scanner area. And once you do that, it just straight up unlocks and goes wherever you left it. So app lock, fingerprint scanner, and the face unlock, everything is working perfectly fine. No problems so far. Talking about basic things, yes, banking apps will be working perfectly fine. No need to worry about it. Throw safety net passed right out of the box. Banking apps will not be a problem in this round. The DRMN4 shows as L1 here, so streaming Netflix or Amazon Prime videos, Internet AP will not be a problem either. And this ROM does offer that Google Pixel like unlimited photos and videos backup with Google Photos. So that's a really nice feature to have right out of the box. I'm just opening a couple of apps so that I can show you that app opening speeds and stuff. And yes, I've already opened all of those. Now let's open YouTube and Instagram as well. I have opened. Right now, let's open these apps and in the test of website, of course, it shows 60 FPS because it doesn't include that higher refresh rate. It only works with 60 Hertz, but RAM management here, it's perfectly working. As you can see, all the apps stays in memory. No problem so far. And switching between apps, it's just buttery smooth experience. No problem so far. And even while like scrolling in X and stuff like that, just notice how smoothly it scrolls. No problems whatsoever while scrolling. And while daily driving, I haven't seen any kind of lags or stutters over here. If you're used to with 60 hertz, it will be fine. But if you are used to with higher refresh rate now, it will feel a little bit laggier because of the 60 hertz refresh rate. That's pretty normal. But otherwise, here are the Android Geekbench score with a CPU stress test on this particular build to give you an idea about the overall UI performance. And as you can see, over 6 lakh of Android score, it's just awesome for this particular device considering this device was launched almost four years ago. This one definitely offers amazing performance, amazing customization, punchy colors everywhere, very good optimization with camera and all. So I would definitely say like overall for daily driving, this Rising OS latest build is one of the best ROMs that I have found for the Redmi K20 Pro. Let me know down there in the comments what do you guys think. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Steve from KDN Tech signing off for today. I'll be watching you guys in the next one. Bye-bye now.